This is the first time I've used uh, a brown. The brown acrylic is It's just a convenient shortcut. I was very fortunate. Uh, Scott and Kelsey are both quite photogenic. The lighting is not too bad. Often the lighting at the first dance is so dark that my camera, my little phone camera, uh, has a hard time see getting the light. It's not the case. And um, it's All that work, they're going to go off the bottom of the paint. 
So either I've made their heads too large or I started them too low. And I, I don't want them smaller than that. There we go. Welcome to the wild, wonderful world of life. All you artists know that um, an average human is about seven, seven and a half, seven and a half inches tall. Um, but if you're an artist, learn that, learn that rule, and then promptly throw it out the window. You, you virtually, in my opinion, you virtually never want to paint a human being. Unless you've got some <laughs> ulterior motive. Unless you're doing something else, unless you're doing an editorial or something. But if you're doing a portrait, um, I think you never do a person seven, seven heads tall. First of all, at least eight heads tall, even though know, it's not exactly literal. Like I, myself, I'm sure, I'm sure I'm not. I'm probably not even seven and a half inch tall. I don't know. I'm very average, like five, nine and three quarters. In fact, when I was a young man, um, that was exactly the average height of a male, of a man in America, was five, nine and three quarters. And that's exactly what I was not. I haven't measured myself at even it's very possible since I'm 66 years old. It's very possible that I've shrunk. Right? But it's also very possible that the Americans have gotten taller in the last five years. So I feel like I'm the less below average height. Anyway, I am. <laughs> so let's do a quick measurement here. Oh, I might have a really, never mind. Let's just do this. Okay, there's one head right there. Two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight. Good. That's just about right. And uh, I didn't finish saying I virtually never do a uh, a, human, a bridal couple um, realistic height. Um, I will do them slightly heroic, only slightly, not crazy. Usually, what I say is is. Um, Of course, I'll stretch them out. It kind of goes, for me, it goes without saying. But I don't want to stretch them out so much that the first thing they say, or the first thing they notice is, the guy will say, and that, by the way, it's, it's better to stretch out the guy more than the girl. Um, but you don't want them to say, well, thanks for making me, you know, 30 pounds lighter or something like that. You, want, you don't want them to notice that you just stretch them out. So that's a real tricky business. I, I will, as I said, I will always stretch, stretch them out along with them. Not nearly as much, by the way. <laughs> Not nearly as much as John Singer Sargent. I mean, he created some real, you know, aliens. Ten heads tall, stuff like that. So I'm not, not into that. I just want to be complimentary, but not exaggerated. Does that make sense? So again, very, very, very fine, very fine balance. Because that's what I'm trying to capture right now. That is very talking talking news thing. Yeah. I'm standing back and just looking at the girl. I'm just going back and looking at the girl. 10 or 15 feet. Okay. Um, I 
think so. I think both their heads are too tall. So they can hurt some of their feet. <laughs> no miles to go. <laughs> it, this is certainly the most nerve-wracking part of, of life of wedding, wedding painting, and because people think that I'm that I'm done, or you know, or close to done, and it's going to look like this. Now, in this case, this is the, the third painting I've done for this family. Hallelujah. So. They're not worried. <laughs> Everybody else in the room is mildly worried right now. But the uh, parents, the bride and groom, the parents, and the bride and groom, so the immediate family. This is the third, and I've got another one coming up next year. Isn't that amazing? You know, I keep intending to build it a thing that will hold my phone, my phone, or my phones off uh, to the side. I just, I just keep not doing it. It will get done, I promise. <laughs> I promise myself. Now, my brain, as, as I paint these figures, uh, my mind will go back and forth between um, just copying the lines as I see them in this photograph. And that's all, so far that's all I've done, is just look at the photograph essentially and try to copy the lines. Uh, but here in a minute I'll change gears and I will draw both of these figures by rote. That is by, you know, my, I've memorized a lot of dimensions in a human figure, what a human figure looks like. And so I go back and forth and back and forth between those two impulses, if you will, um, to try to um, get them as, as realistic as possible. By the way, I have discovered that I very much enjoy. Okay, that's too low. Let's fix that. I very much enjoy um, painting white, white things, like white wedding dresses. Because it's white. And how do you paint white stuff? It's the same as everything else. Layer, 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 layer. And none of the layers are white. That's it. It's quite it's a dirty. White I have also probably the biggest exaggeration of it. I might change it. It's uh, Kelsey's neck. Okay, I'm going to ignore them after a little while. And Paint some of the background. Okay. Yeah, I've got to do so. The other thing here is the background details. And the first thing I'm going to do is draw with these brushes. Draw um, dark details. I think I'll go with purple, purple and violet, just, just to draw, okay, now, do I want these stairs, do I want the stairs coming right up into the back of my head? And I think 
think I do. Yeah. Thanks, blank canvas. Appreciate it. And the reason I'm using violet is simply because it's the darkest of the transparent colors. When you work in, in transparency, um, the rules are slightly different in, in mixing colors. Or opaque. So purple or violet is the, the darkest transparent color. So we could do, we could do uh, dark vivian green <coughs> or Funny how I got this line. How I got so off the mark. Hilarious. <laughs> funny, very funny. Just change color just to add in the variety. Of with some ultramarine and the purpose for changing colors is it's not has nothing to do with realism I'm just using different colors for variety That's all.
something. <laughs> I would normally do that with larger brushes, but these were just in my hand and handy, so. That's cool, why did you do this right here? Because <laughs> that corner's going to get darker, so that's my first layer. All the corners are going to get darker. So, many more layers to go. <laughs> Thanks for watching. That's fun. I like it when people watch. Ask me stuff. Why do you ask? Interesting architectural details. I don't know what these put it for. It looks like iron. Further uh, from coming down from the ceiling. This building evidently used to be something, some some kind of an old industrial. Looks to me like it would have been built maybe in the 30s or 40s, I'm just guessing. And of course, converted into a event venue. Okay, let's let's get a little more serious about the the colors and the values behind the dining room. I'm going to exaggerate this a little bit. I think the dark is the is the appropriate color behind them. There's actually a, a little hallway back here. I don't want to make a lot of it, but uh, a little bit. So that's a good a good little bit of architectural detail that will make the painting just a little more interesting. Hey, Uncle. <laughs> Hello, Mary. Valerie. Yes, Uncle, if, if uh, part of my ex charge for doing a painting is um, travel and lodging. And yes, they give, feed me a meal. I just finished it. It's, it's, if they give me, sometimes they just bring in a hamburger from outside. <laughs> and that's fine with me. I mean, they're paying me to be here. They're not paying, you know. They're not. They're not obligated to entertain you. Um, but most of the time, they just feed us, you know, the same thing that they're feeding everybody else. So it's usually delicious food, as it was tonight. Prime rib, fancy potatoes, you know, nice, nice vegetables. And I always feel so bad because I, I just scarf it down as fast as I, you know, if I could take it intravenously, honestly, I would. Because I'm anxious to get back to painting, you know. I'm, that's what I'm here for. I want to entertain folks and I want to finish a painting, or get close to finish a painting anyway. So uh, I, I take this wonderful food and scarf it down. <laughs> good, I don't know if you know, but when you eat really good food really fast, it's, it's not that special. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so they're, they're supposed to feed me. This is a local wedding that I'm doing tonight, so they don't have to pay for travel. I'm in Durham, North Carolina, which is about 45 minutes maybe from my home. So no, no travel. All right, I think, I think I'm liking that. Um, she doesn't look that great. That is to say, I, I haven't captured her very well. Uh, let's, let's go back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's make some changes. By the way, that's part of the reason why I, you know, stopped off working on, on the figures 
and paint the background for a while so that I could so that I could um, see see the figures with fresh eyes, which is exactly what just happened. So there's a there's a major correction right there. And I'll be doing that. I'm not I, I'm not gonna finish this tonight. Here's a funny story. Um, the first man, the first hundred weddings that I did, almost exactly, I finished every single one. I finished the painting at the reception. Um, but the last I don't know, 40 or so wedding paintings, um, I have not finished. So funny. It's mostly because uh, my technique has evolved. As you know, if you follow me, you know that's the case. I've gotten slower because I've, I've, uh, this is not working very well. Because I've added more and more layers to the steps to the process. That looks terrible. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Kelsey. Um, not really. I mean, this is, as I said, this is the most awkward part of doing a live portrait. Is, you know, the way I do portraits, it's, it just takes a while. I, I have to do it several times. But, you know, refine, 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 refine. And I think I've learned that most people do not have any idea. I think they, they're influenced by you know, people on TV or something. Or the crazy bloke down at the state fair who does portraits in 20 minutes. Those people are good. I mean, a lot of them are. A lot of them are not, too. But, you know, that's another story. Um, Alas, that is not not how I do it. It's always a for me. It's a, always a fight to the finish, <laughs> trying to get a a realistic, a, a perfect likeness. I should say, you know, yes, you regulars know. I've seen you wrestle many times. See if I have another photograph with their hands, or else I just have to invent some hands, which I've done many times. Of 
So what I try to do now at the reception, painting live like this, really just try to get the the bride and groom close enough for showbiz, if you know what I mean. It just just most of the people was as you know as they as they begin to develop as I get somewhat close. It's unlikely. It's possible, but it's unlikely that there's a better portrait artist in the room than, than me. So, and the reason I'm saying that, not because I'm competing, but because, uh, so that means that generally speaking, their level of discernment is lower than mine, if you will, right? So what, honestly, what looks terrible to me well, right now, it, it, this would look not really bad again, too. But as I get closer, what still looks like to me like a terrible rendering, they say, "Oh, that looks just like and stuff like that." I hear that all the time. I don't believe it, but it's nice for people to say it. But I mean, most of the time, they're not just being nice. They actually think they're actually saying you know, that they can see a likeness. But my goal is to just get just close enough so that the guests are impressed. And I'm certainly going to finish as I do now. I finish all my portraits. If it's if it's way out of town, if it's in New York or something, um, I book another an extra night at the hotel and I stay in town and finish it and typically on Sunday um, Sunday during the day in the hotel we've done that many times now I actually quite enjoy it especially if my wife is with me which she usually is on road trips and she's a sweetheart she goes out and gets us pizza or whatever <laughs> we kind of have a a nice, a nice relaxed time. One time, um, I had to finish a wedding painting on, on Saturday night because we were leaving early on Sunday night. Oh, that was hard. And we were in a little cabin up in the mountains. And um, so I had, I was up painting till like 2:30 in the morning. That was not very much fun. You know, we got it done. It was a good thing. It wasn't very much fun. I was so tired. As I said, I've done um, three portraits for this family already. So they're probably, again, the only ones in the room who aren't a little bit nervous right now. <laughs> Everybody else is going, oh, it doesn't look like me. <laughs> I would love to be better than I am at portraits. I really would. But, Guess what? <laughs> to get good, you gotta practice. So let me see. This was, since since mid March. Uh, um, this would be portrait 39 and 40 that I've done this year. So let's, and uh, yeah, so let's practice. So I am better than I was this point. Um, I think I'm going to um, try to wrap. 
wrap up. I'm going to wrap up the, uh, the, the, the acrylics here pretty quickly so that I can move on to oils. Maybe you've heard me say before, when is it, when do I know, when is it time to move on? And the answer is, when the drawing is pretty close, when the colors are pretty close, and when the values are pretty close. That's He's not right. Correction. Oh yeah. I've got <laughs> here we go. So I've got to move his whole face forward. I like the music tonight. It's not loud. It's guitar and one guitar and one violin. That's really sweet. I like it. A little bit sort of, sort of mountainish music. It's a nice tune for me. Let's back him up and see. painting with these big brushes. I mean, the brushes are large compared to the size of the face. We look like an all-star reflection on the shiny floor.
going to cheat a little bit and do some opaque color. So I'll just mix that a little bit of yellow blue with that continuum white. And, um, because I'm, I'm quite anxious. I want to make sure that I don't fail to get uh, some blue accents. Because the whole painting is going to be very, very warm. So as I said earlier, I feel like it's quite important. just watching here but I have a number of things around me to, to kind of define my space you know so that people don't act don't do that so they don't accidentally run into me like I've got a rug on the floor you know so if you're gonna run into me first of all you have to get off whatever the rest of the floor is and you have to walk up on my rug <laughs> I'm not offended by that it's just like notice <laughs> hey you're <laughs> You're changing zones here. Anyway, and then I've got, you know, tripod day. <laughs> he j and my arms are like this, so he, he, I literally had to go like this to get out of his way. And uh, I was quite sure that he'd been drinking a little too much. And I felt really bad. He got a big swath of well, not, But he got a noticeable <laughs> swath of paint on the back of his left shoulder. <laughs> he put his shoulder right there and then walked away. And I tried, I didn't. Anyway, 
same way I would treat all tree branches. I'm not going to paint them, at least not yet, not one at a time carefully. And when the time does come for me to paint, paint them one at a time carefully. I'll only do a few of them. Right? Just like you would with tree branches, typically. Unless you're going to do a crazy, crazy Bob Timberlake kind of thing. I like Bob Timberlake. I like his work. But don't you think that way? That's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> Bob Timberlake, 
you can look him up if you Google him. He's probably North Carolina's most famous artist. Um, he's the kind of guy that paints every, every single tree. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Every single leaf. Every single leaf on the tree. And every twig. And every blade of grass. Every stick of wood. Frankly, I'm delighted that he hasn't cracked up. Right, that looks a little better. <laughs> it's kind of funny to say that. Too many people watching me, they're saying, that just, that's a mess. One of the funny things about this wedding is I'm wearing a mask, so they they can't see me talking to you guys. <laughs> hey, Scott and Kelsey, I hope you guys watch this. Hope you're enjoying it. Maybe on about your third anniversary or something, huh? You can come back and watch it. Anyway, so they, they can't see my lips moving. <laughs> it's kind of funny, actually. Because I'm normally, I'm a little bit more, a little reluctant to talk incessantly to my broadcast audience. Because I don't want the people here to feel like I'm ignoring them. <laughs> now, they can't see my lips moving. <laughs> anyway, funny. lights hanging from the ceiling in here. It's part of the reason I decided to put the, the bride and groom dancing in this room, this room, instead of the one that they actually danced in because of those lights hanging from the ceiling. Plus, it's going to take you long to drive. So. There will be several more layers on all of these lights. One will be, of course, the fuzz layer. So, this is kind of a preliminary fuzz layer. That's all it is. All right. I think I'm going to stop right there because I need to, I'm ready to switch to oil. So, I'm going to end this broadcast. And let's start another one in a little while. I figured all my equipment changed out. I'll call it T86C. Right? Fair enough? All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks for your chat. Hey, you see what you guys are saying. Hello, Valerie. <laughs> it is amazing. I can paint with all the snows. Very good. Hey, TC, TRC 450. Nice to see you. Thanks, guys. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.